But God, we know you have a ministry birthed on the inside of each of us. Help us to get out of your way. Just help us. Help us turn it over to you, Lord. Help us give it to you, all of it. Oh, we trust you with all of our heart. Lay not unto our own understanding, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shit it up on time. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, there's something about the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we say yes to Jesus. Yes. I yield to you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, 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 I love you, Lord Jesus, I love you, Lord Jesus. You know, you have to say that name and mean it. But when you call on the name of Jesus, he shows up. Shows up with power. Shows up with answers. Shows up with direction. He shows up with whatever you need. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He's here this morning. Oh, just picture him tipping around the sanctuary with your miracle. And it's up to you to call him over on your side of the sanctuary. Jesus! Jesus, son, the son of David, have mercy on me. Be like blind brother man. Call him on your side of the sanctuary and say, Jesus! Jesus! Now we know he's on the inside of you, but oh Jesus, oh Jesus, over here Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. Yeah, oh, it's, it's all in his name, sister. It's all in his name. It's his name. Oh, she did not Oh, thank you, my God. Oh, Jesus. She did not bow Something happens when I call you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't you talk about my God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when I call you. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Something happens. Something Yeah, 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 yeah. 
yeah, when I call him. Yeah. When I call you, something happens when I call him. Something happens. Oh, Lord God. See, I tell you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you believe it, call him in. Call him. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. oh when I call his name. When I call his name. Oh, yes. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. She did a bossy at her. Oh, Lord Jesus. She did a bossy at her. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. See, you see, that's how you get his, invoke his presence. See, you just, if you want somebody to come, call them. And since we are spirit beings, we've learned how to walk in this spirit. And we can create an atmosphere. Create an atmosphere for him to show up. And he'll want to show up. But you have to let him know he's welcome. Just call him in. Call on that name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you are welcome. Thank you. Your service. 
your service. I thank you for meeting every need already. Thank you, Lord. This Bible is God's word to me. This Bible is God's word to me. I am who it says I am. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I believe what the Bible says about me. I believe what the Bible says about me. I obey what it says to me. I obey what it says to me. Because this is my roadmap to success. Because this is my roadmap for success. Everything I need. Everything I need. To fulfill my purpose. To fulfill my purpose. Are contained in God's word. Are contained in God's word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For your personal word to me. For your personal word to me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Father, I thank you for your presence today. Lord God, you sh just show us how to decrease, how to get out of your way. Lord God, you know, you know, we are here with many needs. We are here with many desires. Lord, I thank you right now, Father God, that there are hindrances and blockages that we need removed. And you're the only one that can do it. We've tried at our strength. We've been unsuccessful. Lord, and I thank you right now for showing us and teaching us how to just trust you with all of our heart. We decree your word. You said if we decree a thing, it will come to pass. Now, Lord, I thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Not one of us are here by accident. We're here on divine purpose of the Holy Spirit. So we want to thank you for right now for, for allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you for this opportunity. Many wish they had this opportunity just to be in your presence, just to experience you. So we thank you and we don't take it lightly. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. She did the bosom. She cut out a she did the bosom. She did the baba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are several times in the book of Proverbs. Mm. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She got bold of Oh, thank you, Lord God. She tarada bold tigara. She tarada bold tara. She did a bosa. She did a babo kusiata, she did a bosa. She did a babo de la rabasa. She did a rabosa. Said a way seemed right uh, in a man's sight, paraphrasing. It says, but the end leads to death. Said that at least twice in, in Proverbs, I think 14 and 16, chapter 14 and chapter 16. So in order for us to decide if we're going in the right direction. Now, it seems right to us, but we're going to have to pray and seek the face of God and see if it's right for him. Because it says uh, if we're going after in our own strength, it leads to death. We don't want to do anything that leads to death. I don't care how right it seems in my eyes. I only want to do it if I'm instructed of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to continue with the ministry of health. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to... Mm. Pick it up at 28. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody just close your eyes. Let's just, let's just pray. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, for, for, for your plans today. I thank you, Lord God, that you are showing yourself mighty. Thank you for the anointing. Lord God, we're here on divine purpose this morning. We ever so carefully give you all the praise and all the glory. In the matchless name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She did the bosom. Make sure your ways are ways of God. And not that you're doing it because you're comfortable with that. I don't care what it's doing. If it's his job. Or, let's just seek God. And ask him to help us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 says, And God, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 28, And God has set some in the church. Who set them in the church? First apostles, secondary the prophets, third the teachers, after that miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, government, diversities of tongues. It says, are you all apostles or prophets or teachers of miracles? Have you all the gifts of healing? Do you all speak in tongues or do you interpret? And of course, the answer to those questions is what? No, we don't. Then verse 31 says, but covet earnestly the best gift. And yet show unto you a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is love. It says, that word, when it says covet honestly, that means you desire the best gift is the gift that God has given you, isn't it? And, you, and, and, you, and if you desire the gift that God has given you and you use that gift that God has given you, it will enhance the body that God gave you that gift for. God set gifts in the church. Now, you thought you just happened to, you know, like the church, and you just you thought you were going to come over and just fellowship. But God called you. God led you. God directed you. And the gift that he placed in you, he didn't want it sitting on the seat. He wants you to get up and use it. Amen? And uh, we've been talking, you know, I guess I'm going to try to finish up this morning on uh, prayer and, and praise. And as I was studying, and I was reading, and I began to just say, Lord, in my spirit, I know the power of prayer. I know the power of praise. And as I was just sitting, and the the Spirit of God began to deal with me about intercession and about the power of intercession. And I began to write some things down. It says, um, um, what happened is, and the reason God began to speak to me in this direction I was, you know, thinking about my, you know, my pastor friends and family members and relatives and, and uh, uh, that, that have been trapped by sin or habits or, or different stuff, and they couldn't seem to shake it. And uh, we've been we praying, we seek the face of God, and we counsel and we talk, but it seemed like there's a grip on them they can't shake. And I was just talking to God about that, and I said, no, no, you know, this should not be. And listen to what he said to me. God spoke and he said, uh, James, I have assigned faithful intercessors that are praying and standing in a gap for you and your family. He said, faithful, faithful intercessors that are praying and standing in the gap for you. He says, if it weren't for those intercessors, it would be more difficult for you. So you're concerned about people. It says, if it weren't for the intercessor, that faithful intercessor that I placed around you, it would be more difficult for you. It says, you are where you are today in your personal life and in your ministry because of those intercessors and those prayers. And I think, I'm thinking, my Lord, I pray for myself. He said, you are where you are today because of your intercessors and your prayers and their prayers. Say nothing about my prayers. Mm. Now, let me, don't give me, you got to pray for yourself. You have to pray for your family, but I'm showing you the power of an intercessor. And you think, you, know, you think nobody knows about what you're doing. You think nobody cares. But God cares. And if you just stand in the gap and pray and intercede, the situation is turning around. Now, let me just share, share with you something else. Something else. Where you are today because of intercession. He said, the weapons have formed, but they could not prosper. Inter- and he told me, he said, uh, uh, now, in intercession, now, I don't know who you are. So, don't, you know, you don't have to come up to me afterwards. But it says, 
God, he told me to tell you, God is going to reward you openly because of what you've done in secret. Then he says, your labor will not be in vain. Then he said, because you spend much time praying for others. And he, he said that to me. He said, because you spend much time praying for others. And he said, intercessor, because you spend time praying for others. He said, God's going to send somebody across to pray for you. You remember Elijah said, you know, the, the people have, you know, he said, Lord, they killed the prophets. You know, and, and, and they've torn down your altars. And, they, and, and they've done all kinds of uh, debacle, debacle things. And he says, I'm the only one left, and they want to kill me. What did God say? No, oh, no, you're not the only one. I got 7,000 that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. Now, you may seem like you're the only one left. You may seem like you're the only one in the fight, but just continue to fight. Just continue to intercede, because I got some more. God has some more. And it seems like you're in this thing alone. It seems like you're fighting alone. It seems like you're in a turmoil and you're wrestling alone. But I just let me just encourage you, don't give up. Don't give up. Everybody say, I can't give up. See, you're too close to victory right now. You're too close to your breakthrough. You're too close to the open door. And the enemy would love for me to give up. Nobody likes me. Nobody appreciates me. Nobody cares. I might as well just give up. No, you can't give up. You got too much ahead of you. You, you, you know, you've sown too much time, so why give up now? You know, why, why give up now? You, you, you're almost there. It's, it's kind of like, you know, running the race, and you can see the finish line, and you get tired. But you know, the tighter you get, like the, the more juice you, you want to put behind it, because what? You're trying to make it to the finish line. Put the juice behind it so you can make it to the finish line. Now, turn to Ezekiel chapter 22. Talking about the ministries of health, and I want you to see yourself being a part of the ministries of health. And we've seen that in 1 Corinthians that God set some in the church. God set you in the church. God set the gifts in the church. And because God set them in the church, God's going to see to it that the gift he put there will function. And I, you know, if you let me say this, a prime example of, of, of God functioning and moving mightily was on yesterday. Wasn't that a powerful marriage meeting on yesterday? God showed up, and then he put his stamp of approval on it in the meeting. And you know, he want to put his stamp of approval on what he's called you to do. He want to put his stamp of approval if you don't quit. You pray, you intercede. You do what God called you to do. And, and, and what happened is you are functioning in the ministries of health. And I'm just going to be, might as well just tell you that. In the, in the ministries of health, see, and I, of course we told you that uh, this is uh, our 19th year. The first of this month was uh, 19 years. And, um, and visitors, when they come in, all they see is me maybe standing up preaching, giving the word. They don't know what it took to get me to stand here. See, without you, there's no way I can stand here. What have I nothing to stand here for? But because of the ministries of help, because of the intercession, because of the praise and worship, because of the greeters and portals, because of the sound people, because of the internet people, because of all of you, I'm able to stand. And it looks easy, but it's not easy, but it looks easy. But I need you. God needs you as ministers of help. And uh, no ministry would be anywhere would be doing anything without what? Without you, without the ministries of help. We need you. God needs you. Ezekiel, what did I tell you? Ezekiel 22? Let's pick it up at verse 29. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 29. The people of the land have used obsessions. Huh? Oppression, excuse me. The people of the land have used oppression. They've exercised robbery, and they have vexed the poor and needy. Boy, they sound like some rough people. Yea, they've oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Well, they use oppression, exercise robbery. They've vexed the poor and needy, and they've oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I saw for a man among them. Oh, gee, you going to look well? You going to look among the people that's oppressing 
that's exercising robbery, that's vexing the poor and needy. You're going to look for an intercessor. You're going to look for a man among them. So it doesn't matter how bad off you are. God is looking for a man. And of course, it means woman too. I, I saw for a man among them that would make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land or for the people that I should not destroy it. But I found how many? None. I looked for someone from among the people that would intercede, that would be an intercessor that would stand in the gap. But I found none. Therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own way. In other words, they've been oppressing, they've been robbing, they've been vexing the poor. Their own way have I recompensed on their heads, said the Lord. What they've given out, I've given back unto them. Now, if from that passage of Scripture, it seemed like God didn't want to do that, did he? If he was able to find an intercession, you see, that's why it doesn't matter how bad off your family is. If, if you just would intercede, if you just would pray, God would honor it. Now, I know we have all the doom and gloom about the United States and the world, but you know why we're having the doom and gloom? Could it be that you are not interceding? Could it be that we're not praying and standing in the gap? You see, he said, I sought for a man, somebody that would pray, pray for that family, instead of talking about, it. oh, that's a rough family, all right enough, you know, from the natural. You know, they'll cut your throat before you say yes. But you don't want to talk about that part. You want to do what? Stand in the gap and pray for them. As an intercessor, and operating in the ministry of health, and you see, as an intercessor, there's no more uh, powerful calling as an intercessor because you are truly in the ministry of health because now you are caring about them more than you're caring about yourself. When you sow seeds of intercession, God is going to see that your harvest has come up. But you got to sow the seed. Amen? Now, let's turn to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Among all this corruption, God still is looking for an intercessor. He's still looking for someone that will stand in the gap. Someone that will pray. That's you. We're all intercessors. We should all be praying. We should all be standing in the gap. And we can't get weary and well doing. Why? Because our due season is upon us. The doors are about to open. All we have to, we have to just keep on knocking and keep on knocking, keep on knocking. You know, it, it, it could be aggravating, you know, if you just continue to knock, continue to knock, continue to knock. Uh, you know, you, you, can, you can be calling somebody on the phone and you, and you know they're at home. And, and, and they look, at, look on the call ID and they won't answer. I tell you what, you just keep calling. Keep calling. Hang up and call back. Hang up and call back. Hang up and call back. They're going to answer. Oh, you turn the phone off. Because, see, nobody, you know, if, and if a person that way, don't you know God, you know, if you just continue, and, and now, of course, we know once you ask it, then, you know, and if you have asking faith, you know he's already done it. But you have to know it yourself. Not because the word said it, you have to know it yourself. So you act until you know down on the inside that God has heard you. Or you believe down on the inside of you that God has heard you. Amen? First Timothy 2, are you there? Verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks. Supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. According to that scripture alone, if we intercede, if we give thanks and supplication, we'll live a quiet and a peaceable life. If we are not living a quiet and a peaceable life in our nation, in our families, why is it, according to this scripture, no intercession? Now, you can't. Intercession is not praying one minute and talking to negatively. Intercession is when you're going before God. Jesus spent all night in prayer sometimes, you know? and we don't want to spend two hours. We say it don't take all that. But as an intercession, once I lock into to intercession, once I lock into prayer, and I forget about what's going on up here, forget about what's going on around me, 
according to the scripture in First Timothy, especially now. If they'll do that for, my, for a nation, what about for a family? What about for that one person you're praying for? What about it? Do you think God could move if you intercede? Well, it says, I exhort, therefore, supplication, prayer, intercession, giving the thanks be made for all men. Here it says, for king, those that send authority, that we may live a quiet and a peaceable life in godliness and honesty. So if I want my family to live a God and peaceable life, and I begin to intercede and pray, that's, that's done. That's a done deal. Well, pastors, my I'm not leading a God in peace, a God in peaceable life. Well, continue to pray. According to this scripture, scripture alone, it will happen. Actually, it already has. You just hadn't manifested it yet. Hadn't manifested for your eyes yet. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Now, let's, turn, let's go back up to Job. I skipped that, but I want you to go back to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. We're talking about the ministries of help. How I can how I can get hooked up. How I can allow, uh, 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 allow my gift, the gift that God has given me, the gift that he wants me to covet earnestly. How I can allow that gift to be used in the kingdom. And I want to challenge you, if you begin as an intercessor, you begin praying, God will show you, he'll speak to you. He'll say, you know, this is what I call you for, and this is what I need you to do. Because as you begin to pray, God is beginning to manifest some things in our lives. He's beginning to direct us. He's beginning to show us. And as I pray, I'm becoming more in tune, more sensitive to his voice. And as I become more sensitive, sensitive to his voice, I begin to do exactly what he says. Amen? Job chapter 1, verse 1. Well, let's, uh, let's drop down to verse 6. Verse, verse 1 through 5 talks about how Job was a perfect and an upright man and one that feared God and his beauty. But Job 1, 6 says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Where are you coming? Where are you going? What cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro, in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Now, doesn't it seem strange that Satan said that? And the next question, God said, what do? Have you considered Job? Why would, why would you ask Satan that? Because, see, he knows the character of Satan. If he's going up and down, he's a thief. He's looking to kill, steal, and destroy. So when, he come, when that comes out of his mouth, I just been walking up and down. In the earth. God knew right there. Well, if you've been walking up and down in the earth, you've been, you've been looking for somebody to, to destroy. So it wasn't no sense in him asking, what you doing walking up and down? Because you already knew. So the next thing out of his mouth is that well, you thought about Job? Now let's see what Satan said when he saw that. So he must have, according to this, this comment, he must have considered Job. Just like he's considered you. Oh, uh, Jesus, where was I? Let's, okay, he says, uh, walk, and then verse 8 says, and God said to Satan, and, you know, have you considered my servant Job, and there was no, that, there, uh, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect man, an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, well, does he serve you for nothing? Look what you've done for him. He said, you've made a hedge about it. You, about him, about his house, and about everything that he has on every side. You protected him. So you blessed his works of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So he must have considered Job. Now, if you go back up to verse uh, 4 and 5, you will see why I believe Job was prosperous and blessed. Because in verse 4 and 5, uh, it talks about how his sons, he had seven sons and three daughters. It talked about how they would get together and how they would have feasts. And uh, Job, the Bible said Job continually interceded for them. He continually prayed for them. You see, if you continue to intercede for your family and you continue to pray for your family, you just build a hedge. The more you intercede, the more you pray, the bigger the hedge, the stronger the hedge. 
Same way in ministry. And that's why we've been protected from a lot of things in ministry is because of the intercession, because of the power of prayer. That's why you may have been protected from a lot of things in your family is because of the intercession. But when you allow that head to fall down, then you allow the enemy access. Well, that's the only way, that's the only way Job got access, uh, the devil got access to Job. Now, let me just tell you this. You are not spiritual enough. Uh, this is my opinion. You are not spiritual enough to be tried like Job is. So, you know, if, 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 before you say, oh, I'm just like Job. Well, Job was perfect and upright. Before you say that, let's look at your life. Let's look at the, your walk with God. Let, let's look at your time in intercession. Let's look at what, you, you know, uh, what, what you're doing with the things of God. Let's look at your, your access to the Word. Let's look at that before you say, I'm just like Job. Because you may not be like Job. Job ended up with twice as much, by the way. The enemy came in to steal, kill, and destroy, but it, it could not. Everybody say it could not. The weapons were formed, but they could not prosper if you stay with God. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what, you know, what it, what it appears like. Now, what happens is, as an intercessor, and operating in the ministries of health, in the church, if you continue to intercede and continue to pray, it, it may look like chaos all, uh, uh, all you know, going on. But if you continue to intercede, if you continue to pray, that chaos will clear up. Used to watch cartoons when I was a kid, and, and they, they maybe have maybe like a road runner. They'll be running, and all of a sudden a bomb will drop on it. Boom! And all you see is dust. But when the dust clears, the road runner is still running. Well, that's the way you are. You, you, you know, the, the, the bombs, the bombs will come. But if you just sustain the attack of the enemy, you got something on the inside of you that make you still run on. They can't stop you. Everybody say, I can't be stopped. As we operate in the ministries of health, as God, because God has given you the gift, God has set that in your office and set that in you. Now, it's your job now to place that in a local body. God will direct you to that local body, to that church. But if you don't decide you're going to put your hands to the plow, then God has just put a gift in that local church that's not functioning. Has a, a withered hand. Let's send you the hand. That hand has become withered. So now somebody else, the other hand, is going to have to do everything that this hand is supposed to be doing. Now, but if you just, that's, remember Jesus? He told the man to stretch forth your withered hand. He stretched it forth. And it became whole just like the other. Ask God to stretch forth your gift, your gift, your withered gift. Quit looking for, quit looking for the gift that's in the spotlight and look for the gift that's shining in the spotlight. You see, there are gifts that shine in the spotlight and there are gifts that maybe, you know, in the spotlight. Now, they're both gifts. But what is the gift that, what's the person that's shining in the spotlight? Say, so I'm going to quit, I'm going to turn my light off then the gift that's in the spotlight won't be seen with it. So the gift that's shining the spotlight is just as important as the gift that's in the spotlight. But you see, we don't see that. The flesh won't allow us to see that. The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Let God use your gift. Turn to Jesus. Ah. Uh, Go ahead and turn to Psalms chapter 34. I want to show you something. These are some scriptures I asked you to read on last time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hold your, hold your finger there, Psalm 34. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 3. Let me get to this first. I want to show you how sometimes gifts need a, maybe a certain atmosphere to operate. They need a certain freedom to operate. In 2 Kings chapter 3, let's pick it up at verse 11. What had happened here, uh, these armies had come against Israel. 
So the king of Israel decided to go ask the king of Judah to come help him. And of course, the king of Judah at this time is Jehoshaphat. Say, come help me. So Jehoshaphat said, oh, yeah, sure, I'll come help you. You know, you're just like me. We're brothers. So they go and they help them. In the process of, of going to help, there were, you know, these three kings, uh, the, the Israel, Judah, and Moab, they had come together, and uh, they were going to attack the enemy. But while they were getting ready for battle, it seemed like the enemy was out, had outnumbered them. And it seemed like the enemy was beginning to, uh, was going to overtake them. Then the, the king of, uh, uh, of Israel said, oh, God has brought us here just so we could be destroyed. Lost his, uh, his faith just like that because he was looking at what? Circumstances. Now, let's pick it up now in verse 11. After that comment, Jehoshaphat speaks up. Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord? In other words, I don't want to hear what you got to say. Let me hear, the, let me hear from the prophet of the Lord. Because what you are saying is doom and gloom. What you are saying is going to bring about defeat. Let me hear the word of the prophet. That we may inquire of the Lord by him. And one of the kings of Israel's servants answered and said, Well, here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which put water on the hands of Elijah. In other words, he served the prophet Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of thy mother. In other words, uh, Elijah was saying, look, you've been, you've been running, looking for everybody else, other prophets before. Now why are you coming to me now? He's talking to the king of Israel. Israel had already gone into apostasy uh, essentially by this time. So here Judah was the, the, uh, the kind of like the chosen tribe. And so what happened is Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. So if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat going to Israel to help him, and we're going to read on, you know, God would have even helped Israel. So the reason you are being helped could be because somebody with favor on him. Somebody interceding. And it's not necessarily just you. Elijah said to the king of Israel, Elisha said to the king of Israel, what am I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them uh, into the hands of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely there is not, uh, were it not, that I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward the North CD. If it wasn't for Jehoshaphat, you would be hopeless, is what he was saying. I wouldn't even look in your direction. Now, verse 15. After saying all that, he said, now, now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, and the hand of the Lord, uh, that the hand of the Lord moved upon him. That's why it's so important. As, as we, that we saturate ourselves in worship, saturate ourselves in praise. Because just like the prophet's gift moved by because of the minstrel, there may be something stirred up on the inside of you because of the minstrel gift. And if we begin to enter in, and I shared this last time, starting with intercessory prayer, if we get here for intercessory prayer and begin to bombard this place with prayer, we can step right in from prayer, right on into praise and worship, and you can get your miracle before uh, the pastor or whoever the speaker is get up to speak one word. You'll already have your miracle. You receive it in prayer or you receive it in praise and worship because that's something you have to do. <clears throat> now, and, and what we've got to do, and I said this before the last time, we don't have intercessory prayer. We don't have praise and worship just to fill time. No, we have that as a part of ministry. And I want you to, we want you to use it as a part of ministry. We want you to take advantage of, it, advantage of it as a part of ministry and just come in and begin to worship God. Come in and intercede and pray like shutting down on a boat sea high. And if you don't pray in the Spirit of God, pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, just pray in your prayer language and we'll get you filled with the Holy Ghost so you can pray in the Spirit, pray with your prayer language. 
I mean, pray with you, just go ahead and pray with your natural understanding, and then we'll get you filled with the Holy Ghost, and you can pray in your prayer language. And you'll get never ending. You, you won't run out of words praying in your prayer language. You'll just go to God. Now, what you've done, you shut your mind down. And, 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 and this, is not, this, this is not flesh right here. When you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, now your mind will say, oh, you just, you, you just saying words like this. What, what you saying don't mean nothing. It may not mean nothing to you. It may not be nothing to me, but I'm praying that perfect will to God. And the more you pray, the more your mind will shut down. The more you pray in the Holy Ghost, the more you cry out to God in the Spirit, in your prayer language. Now you're becoming in tune. You're tapping into the realm of the Spirit. You're going now back to uh, Timothy where if you pray, You'll live a quiet and a peaceable life. And the people you're praying for will live a quiet and a peaceable life. Call for the minstrels. So that's why it may be so important sometimes is to, to get the minstrels. Get, 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 get God's presence. Invoke his presence. You may not be the best singer in the world, but all God is looking for you is what's coming out of the heart. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I just invoke your presence right now. I thank you, Lord God, for showing up. Now, when you, when you begin to do that for your personal life, and you do that same thing for the ministries of health, you do that same thing for your ministry, God has to show up. And as you sow seeds of intercession, God will do some supernatural things in your life. There are, there are things that we all need. There are things that we all believe God for. There are things that we've been praying and fasting for. And God... Has, has prepared a way. He's prepared that open door for us to just walk through it. But I can't give up right now. Because if I give up right now, I may miss out on what God has for me. Now, let's turn to Psalms chapter 34. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to show you something. I'm going to read quite a few Psalms here. I want to show you something. I want to show you the power. You know, we hear about uh, David dancing with all his might, don't we? Why do you think he did? You think he just did that just because he felt like it? And why is it that we, why is it we can't understand that? We can see the result David had. He was a man after the heart of God. He had favor with God even when he messed up and God, he repented. He was quick to repent because he had a relationship with God. So you're going to mess up. You're going to make some mistakes because you're in this flesh. But if you're quick to repent, now you become just like David. And then when you repent, you don't have to worry about that thought saying, oh, you done messed up again. You just repent it. You just ask God to forgive you. And when you do that, when you ask God to forgive you, now you can go into his presence. You don't have to wait till you feel like it. You just go right away to his presence. When you utter those words out your mouth, Lord, I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? Yes. Almost before you get those words out, he said yes. Now, when you do that, it's imperative, it's important that you immediately get into the presence of God. Because if you don't, those thoughts, the enemy will keep, he'll keep you in a backsliding thinking. He'll keep you with those backsliding thoughts. And, uh, and, and the reason I know that he did with me, I mean, when I first got saved, you know, uh, it seemed like, you know, uh, Every time I would, you know, you know, try to do good or something, the thoughts would come where I, where I had messed up, years, you know, years ago, months ago, weeks ago. And now I, I say, well, Lord, I'm so sorry. And I, it seemed like I must have repented two and three and 50 times a day because of those thoughts. And then, I, of course, I read uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are what? Passed away. And behold, all things have become new. That scripture set me free. So from that point on, when they start, when the devil started telling me about the old thought, I also I remember him. You talking about that old James? Yeah, I remember him. But this new James, that's, you're not talking about him now. And I say, Lord, I thank you for revelation. And you see, he'll give you revelation. And, and, at, and at that time, I would, you know, we would begin to pray in the Spirit. I mean, I, because I had been turned on to the Lord, and I would just pray in the Spirit. I would pray in the Spirit. I would be sitting in, the, in church, sitting in service, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 
and God will begin to do something supernaturally uh, in, in my life. He'll begin to give revelation. And that's why I said that uh, as you begin to pray in the Spirit, and I noticed that the people that prayed in the Spirit, the people that prayed, spent time in intercession, those were the people that God moved and never had. And that's why I want to encourage you to just pray in the Holy Ghost and let God move in your behalf. Amen? Because he wants to. Psalm 34, verse 1. You just repented. You just made a big blunder. Been saved a long time. But you repented. Soon as you repent, God forgives you. So what you going to do after that? Lord, I thank you. Verse 30, Psalm 34, 1 says, Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall what continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, you magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. This fear of this bombarding my mind, God delivered me from that. Psalm 149, God delivered me. I sought him. I, I repented. Now I'm praising him for forgiving me. I'm praising him because he, 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 he died for me. I'm pr I, I praise him because his blood has cleansed me. Cleansed my conscience from dead works. And I can go boldly before the throne of grace. I can praise him. And I can worship him. And I can intercede. And my prayers are getting answered because I'm coming before the throne of God. Not in my righteousness, but in the righteousness of Christ. Psalm 149 verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise in the, in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the temporal and the heart. Okay, you need to praise him with the dance, but I don't dance. Dance, move your feet. You see, if you had won the lottery, you'd be dancing. And you don't know how to dance, but you'll make up some, you'll do something. Well, God, oh, he, wants, he, he wants what's inside of you to manifest on the outside. He's better than any lottery. He, oh, God. He wants, to, he wants to do so much for you. And you, I, I, I don't want to dance because, I, it, you know, I don't feel like it. Or, you know, I don't care what somebody beside me may say, what's he doing? They don't know what I need from God. They don't know what my appointment is. When they see what God does for me, they're going to be dancing too. You see, but you know, you can't give up. You can't give up. 149.5 says, let the saints be joyful in, in, in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. It says when you praise God, you put a sword in your hand, a sword for the enemy. So when, when you begin to praise him and the sword comes in your hand, you begin to cut. You begin to come on the offense to execute, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. To bind the, their king with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So if you praise him, you will bind the enemy with chains, even the kings, and you will bind their nobles with fetters of iron. You will execute uh, upon them the judgment written. He says, this honor have all the saints, not just a few. But all of us. So because we have this honor, we ought to what? Praise the Lord. We ought to praise the Lord. Because we've got this honor. Psalm 150. Psalm 150 says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Not because of what he did yet. Oh, Jababa, the mighty act could be a part of that, but praise him because of his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet and with the, the, with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance again. Praise him with the string instrument. In other words, any, anything you got, praise him. Praise him with everything on the inside of you. God, you know, God, God doesn't mind the noise. You know, God doesn't, you know, if, if, it coming, if it's coming from your heart, God is looking for it. <laughs> Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath 
If you got dressed, you ought to be doing what? Praising the Lord. And you begin to praise him, and you'll still be avenger. You begin to praise it, and God will do some supernatural things in your life. Now, what does this have to do with ministry of health? You see, without you operating in this, you, you can't function in your office as a ministry of health. Because, because just because you've made yourself available, because you've decided you're going to operate in the calling, because you've decided you're going to uh, take the gift that God has given you and use it in ministry, that's when the devil's going to show up. He's going to try to make sure that you don't use it. He said, I can't, I can't have you using that gift to help this living word. You know, you know, pastor's vision is going to come to pass. I got to see what I can do to stop you. Now, what can I do to stop you? And he'll come, he's going to begin to shoot dodge. He's going to begin to come against family. He's going to cause your family to say some things. He's going to cause your job and your boss to act up. So if you don't get into this and begin to praise God, you're going to begin to looking at the circumstance. Not only are you going to be messed up, but now you've hindered the gift that God has given you for the house of God. So it's a twofold uh, uh, hindrance. Your life and the ministry of God's life. And the ministry of life. So what I've got to do, I've got to recognize that I am a spirit being, and God has given me this gift. God has set the gift in the ministry. God set the gift in me. He set me in the ministry. So God set the gift in the ministry. So now it's up to me to do what? Take the gift that God has given and begin to use it for his glory. And I have to realize that it's not me. I don't care, you know, I, I may be the, the, the best sound person there is. I have to give God all the praise and all the glory. Because if the sound is not right, you're going to be distracted. I'm going to be distracted. Now, nobody ever, you know, you don't ever hear, you, you hardly hear, ever hear people say, you know, the sound man this and the sound man that, and, and give him accolade. But he's still doing his job. He's making me sound good, look good, and he's making you receive. But you know, He's in the background. That's the way the intercessors are. They're in the background. Oh, but they're making you look good because they're praying for you. Oh, they make it, they're creating the atmosphere in the service. Because now when a people come through the front door, because of the intercessor, they can sense the love of God. They can sense the power of God. So they may come in the door just because of the intercessor. And the power of God will come up on them. And they could begin to weep right there and not know why. It's because of intercession. It's because of the gift of the intercessor. So we can't get weary in well-doing. Not of my gift. There, you know, I, there have been, you know, when I was coming up and, and you know, and getting saved, you know, I just, I just wanted to help. That was just down on the inside of me just there. What do you need me to do? Cut the grass? What do you need me to do? Fix the commode? What do you need me to do? I just, just let me help in the house of God. And I love doing that. Why? Because that was a gift. God had put that on the inside of me. And, and you didn't have to tell me nothing. You didn't have to say thank you. You know what made me feel good? I made myself feel good. Let's just say I cut the grass and I, and I you know, drove up that Sunday morning and I looked at the grass. Nobody may not even notice that it had been cut, but I did. I said, man, that, that yard sure looked good. And I cut it. When people come to this altar and the pastors and the ministers lay their hands on them, they get delivered. They get healed. Most of us just look at the pastors and the ministers. But did you know it's your intercession that created the atmosphere for them to even want to come to this altar? See, if without your intercession creating the atmosphere, they wouldn't want to come here in the altar. But when they come, God has other gifts to be used to lay hands on them to set them free. I can't get jealous of them, and you can't get jealous of me, and I can't get jealous of you. Because we're what? One. If the Lord permit, I want to talk about the body next time on how the body of Christ works together. Stand on your feet. I want to show you if we begin to operate in the things of God, if we allow the Spirit of God to manifest in our lives, if we press into God, 
If we decrease and tell them, that, Lord, help me to get out of your way. Let me decrease. I don't want people to see me. I want them to see you. I don't want my family to see me. I want them to see you. Because if they see you, Jesus, you're going to make a difference in their lives. I don't want them to give me the accolades. I want them to give you the accolades. Because if they give you the accolades, you're going to promote me. I'm not worried about that. But they are seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness. Every eye closed right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for the gift that you've placed inside of each of us. Now, Father, if we are truly intercessors, if we are, if we are truly want to use the gift for you, you put the gift in us for someone else.